This tutorial covers some basic usage of Matplotlib and NumPy to start solving problems of linear algebra in Python. As we go forward, we'll go deeper to understand different aspects of these tools and investigate how we can use them in linear algebra. Let's get started. In linear algebra, we often use two packages to study and solve problems, NumPy and Matplotlib. In simple terms, Matplotlib graphs your data on figures and NumPy is used to work with numerical data, both in Python language programming. To start coding, you need some very basics of Python. You need an environment to write and execute your code. I use Jupyter Notebook inside VS Code. I'll provide you with a link in the description about how you can run Jupyter Notebook inside VS Code. There are also lots of tutorials on YouTube that you can use to set up your environment, but feel free to use any environment you want to run your Python code. Alright, the first step to start is installing Matplotlib and NumPy. As we said, we use these libraries to solve our problems. You have different ways to install Matplotlib and NumPy. You can use pip to install your packages or conda using the anaconda distribution or any other method you are comfortable with. So if you use pip, simply install NumPy and Matplotlib with pip install NumPy and Matplotlib. However, if you use anaconda, it comes with Matplotlib and NumPy pre-installed, so no further installation steps are necessary. Let's begin our work by using NumPy. In NumPy, everything starts with using NDArray, which stands for N-Dimensional Arrays. With arrays, we can represent vectors and matrices in NumPy and start our calculations. There are several ways to create arrays, but some of them are more common. For example, conversion from Python list and tuples, or using intrinsic NumPy array, like a range, ones, zeros. NumPy has over 40 built-in functions for creating arrays. We will study most useful of them in future. The most basic and useful way is to create an array from a regular Python list or tuple using the array function. For example, if I provide a list of numbers to the array function, it will create a NumPy array for me. But why we use NumPy array instead of a list in Python? NumPy arrays are faster and more compact than Python list because an array consumes less memory to store data. Additionally, arrays provide us with a lot of advanced mathematical operations. But before moving forward with NumPy arrays, it's important to consider a caveat in NumPy. There is a difference in terminologies used in linear algebra and NumPy, and that's about dimensions. In linear algebra, we use the term dimension to express the dimensionality of a vector or a matrix. It represents the number of entries in a vector, which reflect the number of axes we have in the coordinate system. In matrix, dimensions are used to express the number of elements in rows and columns. But what about dimension in a NumPy array? Array also referred to as ND array, which is shorthand for N dimensional array. N dimensional array is an array with any number of dimensions like 1D or 1 dimensional array, 2D or 2 dimensional array, and so on. But in NumPy, when we use the term 2 dimensional array, it doesn't carry the same meaning as the 2 dimensional vector. In NumPy, 
it instead defines the number of axes in an array. For example, a 1D array is a vector, a 2D array is a matrix, and a 3D NumPy array is a tensor which is extremely useful in deep learning. In NumPy, you can get the dimensionality of an array using n-dime, which is the number of axes in an array. It's what dimension meaning in NumPy. And using shape, we can get the dimensions of the array, but it's what dimension meaning in linear algebra. This is a tuple of integers indicating the size of the array in each dimension. So right now we know how to create a vector or a matrix in NumPy. One dimensional array are vectors and two dimensional arrays are matrices. Let's begin our work in Jupyter Notebook. The first step is importing NumPy. So I import NumPy using import NumPy as NP. Then I use a Python list to create a NumPy array. So if I provide a list of numbers to the array function, it will create a NumPy array for me. Before moving forward, I want to check two methods we discussed before, n-dime and shape. If I say vec.n-dime, I can see it returns the number 1. This represents the dimensionality in NumPy, which isn't very helpful in linear algebra. Like we said before, the number 1 simply tells us that the array represents a vector. But what about shape? If I check the result of vec.shape, it returns a tuple. And this is what dimensionality means in linear algebra. This tuple represents the number of rows and columns. In a vector, we always have either one row or one column, depending on whether it's a row vector or a column vector. But at the end, there's no difference between showing a vector as rows or columns. If the elements of two vectors are the same, those vectors are equal, regardless of whether they are represented as rows or columns. Let's move to draw data on coordinate system. There are different packages in Python for drawing data on figures, specifically on coordinate systems. Packages like Matplotly, Plotly, and Seaborn. The most commonly used package is Matplotly, but other packages like Plotly are impressive for their ability to render 3D plots and create interactive visualizations. Right now, we use Matplotly, but in the future, we will use Plotly to create excellent plots. So let's begin. To draw a vector on a coordinate system, I'll start by importing NumPy as NP to create an array. So first thing first, I import NumPy as NP. After, I create my vector with a NumPy array, as we saw before. I name this vector R, which has coordinates of 1 and 1. Then I should import matplotlib to my Python code. So import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Matplotlib.pyplot is an interface to Matplotlib. To draw my vector on a coordinate system, I use a function named plot in Matplotlib. In a 2D coordinate system, the first argument represents the coordinate on the x-axis, and the second argument represents the coordinate on the y-axis. 
So just like a list in Python, I can select the first element of my array or coordinates in x-axis and also the second element or coordinates of y-axis of my vector and pass them to the plot function. Also, I want to show my vector as a dot. These dot represents the location of the head of the vector, where the vector goes. It's a common way to represent vectors on a coordinate system. So I can set an option in matplotlib using the plot function. I'll specify the marker option as O, which represents dot in matplotlib. And there we go. We have the location of the vector on the coordinate system. But still my figure looks a little weird. So I'll add a grid to my plot to see the coordinates better. And I change the grid lines to dashed lines with line style option. Also, I want to have the origin inside my figure. So first to change the range of numbers in a plot, I can use xlem and ylem method in matplotlib. And I give the range of number I want to show on my plot to these methods. Additionally, to accentuate the origin, I draw two different lines on my plot. One where x is equal to 0 and another where y is equal to 0. This time, I don't want to draw a dot. Instead, I want to draw a line on the coordinate system. So, I need two points in these 2D coordinate system to draw a line that crosses these two points. I use these points, minus 2 and 0, and 2 and 0, to draw a horizontal line. And also, 0 and minus 2, and 0 and 2, to draw a vertical line. So, I give the x-coordinate of my points as the first argument and the y-coordinate of my points as the second argument. One time for the horizontal line and another time for the vertical line. I can set the color of my line to black using the letter K, which represents black color in matplotlib. But there is still a problem. If I change the limits of my x-axis or y-axis, I need to adjust the coordinates of these points to make them longer or smaller accordingly. Let's do this. As you can see, my range of x-axis and y-axis changed, and my lines are not fit to them right now. So I need to automatically get the lengths of my axis and use them to draw my arbitrary lines. To create these lines, I use the GCA method to get the data about the current axis of the coordinate system. Let me show you how I use GCA to create these lines. I save the GCA inside a variable like CA, which means current axis. And then I use get underscore xlim and get underscore ylim from CA variable to get the length of my axis. We can see the value of them change when the lengths of my axis and coordinate system change. 
Now I simply use these coordinates to draw my lines. So I use ca.get_xlem and ca.get_yLem to draw my lines dynamically. Now my lines fit to the range of my axes automatically. But what if I want to show my vector using a line? We can do this right now. We saw how to draw a line using Matplotlib. Also, I can set a color and make the style of this line dashed. But there is a simple way to do this in one argument. After entering my coordinates, I just give a string with the value of R and two dash. It makes my line dash and make the color of it red. And I have my vector in coordinate system. In the future, we'll use NumPy and Matplotlib a lot. And we'll learn more about how to use them to solve various problems in linear algebra.